guys, it's Miss Naomi. I'm really excited to get to have this time to kind of be together. I know it's not the same, but it's the best we can do for now, and we'll have to make the best of a not so great situation. So I wanna get started by asking you all a question. Can anyone think of someone at school or in your homeschool co-op or a WANA class that isn't very nice? Maybe it's someone who likes to pick on the people who are smaller than them. I know I can think of a few bullies that I've met over the years. It isn't very nice to be picked on, is it? Well, there was a group of people back in Bible times named the Philistines, and they were picking on another group of people called the Israelites. But today, we are going to hear about how God used a tiny hero to make a really big impact. Now, our story starts back in the fields at the home of a man named Jesse. Jesse had a bunch of sons. Some say he had seven, others say he had eight, but either way, I'd say that's a bunch. His youngest son was named David, and he was not what anyone would call big. He wasn't even old enough to be a soldier like his brothers. So he stayed in the fields to look after the sheep. David's brothers did not like him, and they often picked on him. Well, it turned out that there was an even bigger bully in town. His name was Goliath, and boy, was he ever big. Now, fun fact, they say that Goliath was nine feet, nine inches tall. A few years ago, Mr. Jack and I did some measuring at the church, and we found out that if Goliath tried to come to our church, he wouldn't even be able to stand up straight unless he was in the big auditorium. Now, can you imagine having a bully that was that tall? I sure can't, but it's true. Big, tall, scary Goliath was the biggest bully in town. He was a Philistine, and he wanted everyone to know how tough he was. And he did such a good job at it that when it was time for the Israelites to fight the Philistines to put an end to all of this bullying, no one would even leave their tents. Each day, Goliath would stand outside shouting, Who will fight me? And each day, no one volunteered. Back at home, little David was asked by his father to go and take food to his brothers, who were supposed to be fighting Goliath. Quick to obey his father's instructions, David set out for the place where the soldiers' tents were set. When he arrived, he heard no one was able to muster enough courage to fight Goliath. David looked at himself, and though he looked small from the outside, he knew that he was mighty on the inside. In Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11, we are told to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, or the tricks, of the devil. So with God's power resting upon him, David approached Saul, the head of the army, and said, I will fight Goliath. I imagine Saul was trying hard not to laugh when he saw David, such a young individual. He looked at him and stated, clearly you are not able to go out against these Philistines and fight him. You are only young and he has been a warrior from his youth. David told Saul of all of the times a bear or a lion tried to attack one of the sheep he was watching alone in the fields. And with confidence in the God who went before him, he replied, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Who could argue with those words? Saul reluctantly allowed David to go, but tried hard to force the small boy into armor. David declined and went towards the place where Goliath would come with nothing more than a sling, five stones, and the faith in the God who had sent him. Like clockwork, Goliath appeared shouting, who will fight me? Fully expecting no reply. To his surprise, however, a small voice from below his replied, I will fight you. I imagine a big booming laughter emerged from the throat of that giant. 
as he saw an unarmed boy standing there. He looked David over and saw he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he hated him. Insulted at the very thought of it, he said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? Again, confident in God's power, David replied, You come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. With that, David took one stone and placed it into a sling. He began to swing that sling around and around and around, and all of a sudden the stone launched from the sling. <whistles> Thud! The stone hit that mighty giant, and with just one hit, he fell to the ground. The Philistines saw the power of God and ran from the Israelites, who came and cheered at the sight of this big bully finally defeated once and for all. This story is often told to remind people of just how powerful God really is. But I like to tell this story to show people there is nothing we cannot do with God and that God chose to use a small person just like you to do something so big and so important. Now, I wouldn't be me if I didn't remind you that throwing a rock at a bully is not something we should be doing. But God may be calling you to do something else to make a big difference for his kingdom. It might be as simple as talking to that kid that everyone picks on. It might be helping your brother or sister with something they are struggling with. Or maybe it is something bigger. It might be something like becoming a missionary, pastor, or leader at church when you get older. It might be becoming the president or a prime minister for my Canadian friends watching. But no matter what God calls you to, we know he will give you all the tools you need to do it. Now, let's together try to remember our new verse. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Well, friends, it's been great to get to be with you today. <clears throat> I hope you <laughs> um, enjoyed hearing about our tiny hero who made a very big impact. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. In case you missed the intro in today's service, I need to tell you something. A superhero visited us today, and we were all left with a mission. This week, we want you to come up with your own superhero. Draw a picture of that hero, design a symbol, or you could even make a costume if you had the right things for it. But make sure you take a picture of your designs and get the grown-ups you live with to help you post the pictures on Facebook. When you do, make sure to use the hashtag VPKidsHeroes so we can all see your new superhero and learn what superpowers you have. Well, it's that time when we have to say goodbye, but I'll be back next week, so make sure to look for me, and I'm going to be watching for you and your superhero, okay? All right. Bye, guys.